Studies show that an average adult makes about 35,000 remotely conscious decisions every day. Assuming that most people spend around 8 hours per day sleeping, that makes roughly 2,000 decisions per hour or one decision every two seconds. Life is full of choices, opportunities, uncertainties and also high risk consequences of our decisions. The action initiated by our decision determines our destination, failure or success, be it personal, social or professional. Making effective decision needs the understanding of the reality of the background and the ability to predict the future consequence of our decision. According to American psychologist and psychoanalyst Eric H. Erickson, human being passes through eight different developmental stages of life from the time of conception to days. Infancy, toddler, preschool age, school age, adolescent, young adult, Adult, middle adult and older adulthood. One of the most important decisions that shape the life of an individual is the decision related to career choice. Every individual faces the challenge of career choice decision at one point or another. The career decision making process is ongoing throughout one's professional life in as your career progress. However, adolescents face bigger pressure on making career decisions decision as a student during making selection of their study program. Thank you for coming to my channel. My name is Desta Siba. I am a medical practitioner, senior lecturer, business owner and manager. Today I am going to discuss about career choice, how I made medicine as my career choice and I think I really use some traditional or strange way to make my career and I just want to share with you my experience. This will take me back to high school when we completed high school and that was really very long time ago and I think that's maybe like close to 20 years now. Yeah, so when we completed high school, we were allowed to choose two fields of study even from high school, medicine and pharmacy. Those who want to join health side, they are allowed to choose pharmacy and medicine at the same time. And I think their plan was just after we joined college, they will give us some orientation and we decide which way to go medicine or pharmacy and I remember after I arrived at university I decided to make some kind of research because I was not sure which way to go and I didn't know what it means to be doctor or to join pharmacy so I decided first to go to pharmacy school and I, I wanted to have some information from pharmacy school students and I remember the first time I arrived at school it was lunch time and the students were having their lunch in the cafeteria. I approached the students, I introduced briefly myself and I told them why I came and, and I said um, I just have some kind of difficulty to choose between pharmacy and medicine. I just need some information I said and I never forget one of the students said the response of one student and he said is it not good if you were called a doctor? <laughs> that was his response and I don't remember anything else and I walked around the compound, looked at the classrooms in the dormitories and returned to the medical school. And during that time we were allowed to stay in the medical school uh, side. So it was not difficult for me to meet students from the medicine. And I was already live in the same dormitory with the student and I took my time until I familiarized myself with the students. And one day I asked them, are going to choose between pharmacy and medicine? What do you recommend? I say and one of the students in fact he was uh, finally the student and he said definitely medicine you have to go to medicine he said and then but he said we were working very long hours and it is very stressful and the doctors are paid very small amount of salary he said that moment I was kind of my confusion really increased because my main reason to go to pharmacy was just to complete it to you know fast and get a salary I needed money. <laughs> I don't know why for. <laughs> and um, 
then that really increased my confusion. So, you know, the day was counting and we were almost about to have orientation and during orientation day from pharmacy school and medical school, everyone gathered together in the hall. They start to give us orientation about pharmacy side, gives us orientation about the pharmacy and the medical side gave orientation about the medicine. And I heard everything and then I couldn't really arrive at some kind of decision. I was the same state and they distributed paper. Everybody was feeling the form. A paper and pen was already on my table, but I couldn't decide. At the last moment, something happened. I looked to one of my side and I saw one of the students say medicine. His grade was a little bit lower than mine. So I decided that if this student is going for medicine, why I'm not? And then I said medicine. I swear that was the first moment I cheated. I never cheated on exam. Since then, I became very friend with that guy because uh, later on I found out that medicine is the right choice for me. Although the steps that I took was wrong, I ended up in the better choice because pharmacy failed before medicine in our country. Pharmacy failed, then medicine followed. <laughs> medicine field now too but anyways and uh, that's a different story so i ended up in medicine and i continued my career in happy way so that is most traditional way or traditional approach after i really look my story i revised literature there are ways to approach perfect job for one person may be completely wrong for another person you know that's what i found out after i grown up making wrong choice in your career can completely ruin your life. Now we will see four factors which can affect our career decision making processes. So the first thing is somebody has to understand himself, his talent, his strengths, his weakness, his limitation based on your skills and ability. When you are aware of your limitations and your strengths and you can correlate your interest with a profession or with a career that you are looking for. Skill wise like are you good at communication, dealing with human objects, with technology or you have to assess your ability. Are you a critical thinker? How about your work team? You know, you have to consider all those parameters before you go to deciding. The second thing is personality. There are different types of personality. According to American psychologist John Lewis Holland, he came up with six ideal vocational types of personality. People with realistic personality are also known as doer or pillars. They are mechanical, practical, good with tools and machines. People with investigative personality are also known as thinker. They are analytical, logical, observant, and precise. They value science and they are good in understanding and solving science and math problems. People with artistic personality are creators, innovative, imaginative, and they are good in unstructured conditions. They usually avoid highly ordered or repetitive activities. People with conventional type of personality are organizers. They like to work with number, records, or machine in a set, orderly way. Generally, they avoid ambiguous, unstructured activities. They are good at working with written records and number in a systematic and orderly way. They value success in business. People with enterprising personality are pursuers. They like to lead and pursue people and to sell things and ideas. They generally avoid activities that require careful observation and scientific and analytical thinking. They are good at leading people and selling things or ideas. People with social personality type are helpers. They like to do things to help people like teaching, nursing, or giving first aid, providing information. They generally avoid using machines, tools, or animals to achieve their goals. They value helping people and solve social problems. The third factor which influences our career choice decision is interpersonal influences. Students who are influenced by interpersonal factors highly value the opinion of family members and significant others. 
They therefore consult with and depend on these people and are willing to compromise their personal interests. Study showed that mothers were regarded as the most significant family members that impacted positively on students' career choices. Fathers were the second most significant individuals, followed by siblings or guardians. Teachers and educators are significant figures in the process of youth career decision making. An early attention to students' skill and aptitude is critical in guiding students to better career choice. The fourth factor which influences career choice decision is culture. So there are two types of culture. Those are individualistic and collective culture. Individualistic society, youths are encouraged to choose their own careers and develop competence in establishing a career path for themselves. Whereas in collectivist society, youths are required to conform to familial and social standards and they are often expected to follow predetermined career track. The right way to make career decision begins with making self-assessment. We have to assess ourselves in which way we are good. Like we have to assess our communication skill or our work ethics, personality. We have to assess the value also. Why it is important to join this field of study? Like don't have to consider salary or other compensation or the status of the profession in the community. So you have to think of the value, what is very important for you from that profession or from that career. What really do you contribute to the society from pursuing that field of study? So the first one is to make self-assessment and the other is just to make research to explore different kind of studies like don't the one that you already informed by friends or family or programs that already you have information but you have to list out all the possible programs and you have to explore it you have to take an action meaning you have to have some experience going to if for example if you want to pursue medicine just don't go to directly to college you have to try to go to hospital find out some of information meeting doctors or you know like you can see how things going around or you can do some volunteer thing or if you have interest in other side like for example in engineering or in teaching or in IT you have to try uh, something before you decide uh, on which way to go so that is taking an action the final thing is you have to make a decision so you have to make a decision you have to pick the program that you are interested in and then you have to make another further evaluation of your decision and go for it making a final decision doesn't mean in the end so you can change your career along the way until you ended up with something which is really satisfactory and, and enjoyable for you this is information for especially teenagers or even the grown-up how to change their career or how to make career choice decisions so you can help your loved one just discussing this issue at your home or during coffee time and it is very important in my recommendation is schools should have some kind of you know vocational guidance counselors how to make our career choice uh, decisions so thank you for watching my today's video and if you have comments and questions you can put down in the comment and I will come up with the answer don't forget to subscribe like and share my video see you